Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Ray Gricar? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon, and check out my podcast on YouTube, Bella Grande Media. I will put the relevant links for those items in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background in this case. I'll move to the timeline of the disappearance, then I'll offer my analysis. Ray Gricar was born in Cleveland, Ohio on October 9, 1945. I realize there are a variety of ways to pronounce his name. I've seen Gricar, 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 but from what I understand, Gricar is the way he pronounced his name. So that's what I'll use in this video. Ray graduated from high school and attended the University of Dayton. This is where he met a woman named Barbara. The couple would marry in 1969, not long after he graduated. They would have a daughter together. Ray enrolled at the Case Western Reserve University School of Law. After graduation, he took a job as a prosecutor specializing in serious violent crimes like homicide. He moved to State College, Pennsylvania in 1980 because his wife accepted a position at Pennsylvania State University, also known as Penn State. Ray decided to be a stay-at-home dad, but then changed his mind when he was offered an assistant district attorney position in Center County, Pennsylvania. When the district attorney chose not to run for re-election in 1985, Ray successfully ran for the office. He was re-elected district attorney in 1989. He divorced Barbara in 1991. Ray was re-elected in 1993. In 1996, there were several notable events. In the county at that time, the district attorney was a part-time job. However, Ray campaigned to make the position full-time. He was successful, so his job changed from part-time to full-time. Ray remarried. He would divorce five years later. The last event in 1996 was that Ray's older brother, Roy, disappeared from Westchester, Ohio. A week later, his body was found in a river. It was determined that he had brought an end to his own life. As a full-time district attorney, Ray was re-elected in 1997 and 2001. He announced in 2004 that he would not run for re-election. He planned on completely retiring from practicing law in December of 2005, even though he would only be 60 years old at that time. There was no indication that any serious challenger for a district attorney would have run against him. If Ray wanted to seek re-election, he easily could have won. He was well-liked in the community. At this time, his romantic interest was a woman named Patty Fornicola. Ray lived in her home in Belfont. Patty worked for the district attorney's office in Center County. Now moving to the timeline of the disappearance. On April 15, 2005, at 11.30 a.m., Ray was in his red Mini Cooper when he placed a call to Patty to tell her that he was skipping work that day. He told her not to expect him home until late. He said that he was driving on Route 192 headed to Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Ray did not return home. At 11.30 p.m., Patty reported Ray missing. She assumed that he had been involved in an automobile accident, like his car had run off the road and nobody could see him. He had been driving through some rural areas, so this theory wasn't really that unusual. The next day, Ray's vehicle was found by a Pennsylvania State Trooper in the parking lot of an antique mall called Street of Shops in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, right near the Susquehanna River. Evidently, Ray had an interest in antique cameras, which may explain why he was there. Street of Shops has to be the most unoriginal name for a shopping mall. I can just picture some guy contemplating what to name the area. Well, there is a street, and there are some shops on it. How about Street of Shops? I guess it was like an early day for him. Now, in the parking lot of Street of Shops, Ray's car was sitting there unlocked. The location of the vehicle was notable. It was right near a bridge across the Susquehanna River. When Ray's older brother ended his life in 1996, his vehicle was left parked in a similar place. Inside the vehicle, the police found Ray's work cell phone, which was owned by the county. It had been turned off. They did not find Ray's wallet, keys, or his county-issued laptop. Forensic technicians noticed the distinct smell of cigarettes 
when they entered the vehicle. On the passenger side floor mat, they found cigarette ash. Interestingly, Ray did not smoke. He actually hated cigarettes. There was no sign of Ray, even after a search of the Susquehanna River. There was no indication from other records as to where he could have gone. For example, his credit cards were not used. Nobody touched his bank accounts. There was no recent activity on his email account. Police dogs appeared to indicate that Ray exited his vehicle and climbed into another one. A few people reported they had encountered Ray on Market Street in Lewisburg. This is within walking distance of where the car was parked. Some people had actually spoken to him. One shop owner said that it appeared as though Ray was waiting to meet somebody as he was standing in a shop. A witness said when Ray was in the parking lot, he moved his car over a few spaces as if he was creating a space for someone else to park near him. Someone else said that they saw him on a cell phone. He appeared to be excited. He was moving around, like waving his arms around. Another person claimed to have seen him with a dark-haired woman. This witness was not really sure if the man with her was Ray Grecar. Another witness saw Ray in his Mini Cooper at 5 p.m. heading south on Route 15 near Lewisburg. So this sighting really throws off the timeline that the police had put together. The witness was next to him in a traffic signal. He said Ray did not look happy. This witness was positive. It was Ray Grecar that he saw in the vehicle. As I mentioned, Ray's laptop was not in his vehicle. The police thought maybe it was at the residence he shared with Patty or in his office, but they could not find it anywhere. Over three months later, on July 30, 2005, the laptop was found under a bridge in the Susquehanna River. It was where Route 45 crosses the Susquehanna in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. The hard drive was missing. It could not have just fallen out. It was clear that it had been purposely removed. The hard drive would be recovered about two months later under an abandoned railroad trestle about 300 feet upstream from where the laptop was found. The authorities could not recover any data from it because it was extensively damaged. Years later, in April of 2009, Investigators said that prior to Ray's disappearance, a computer at Patty's house, again where Ray lived, was used to conduct internet searches including how to fry a hard drive, water damage to a notebook computer, and how to wreck a hard drive. Ray Grecar was never found. On July 25, 2011, he was declared dead in absentia. There were multiple sightings of Ray. One sighting that really stands out occurred in a bar in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. The bartender and an off-duty police officer said they saw Ray watching a baseball game. One probably less reliable sighting involved Ray being spotted at a taping of the Oprah Winfrey show in Chicago. Maybe she gave him a car and he drove away, who knows. No sightings of Ray Grecar were ever confirmed. Now moving to my analysis. Starting with mental health and personality factors, we see that Ray had no history of mental health problems. He was not depressed. He never mentioned hurting himself. People close to him indicated that he was excited about his upcoming retirement. Evidently, he had a substantial pension and planned on traveling around the United States. As far as his personality, Ray was described as aloof. He seemed to be lost in thought frequently in his own world. He would pass people in the hallway without acknowledging them, like he wouldn't smile make eye contact, or say hi. However, he was friendly and humorous if somebody would initiate a conversation. This indicates that he was low in extroversion and analytical. When combined with this high conscientiousness, the result was a person who was highly competent at being a district attorney. For example, his performance in court was exceptional. People said he was meticulous, attentive, and very well prepared for court proceedings. Ray had a number of interests outside of being a district attorney, including his fascination with antique cameras that I mentioned before. In the months leading up to his disappearance, Ray appeared frail. He lost a lot of weight. At a scheduling conference, he was asked about a particular date to begin a trial. He said, quote, I won't be here, unquote. People thought maybe he meant he was going to be on vacation. After his death, his estate was only valued at about $1,000, which may have seemed unusual given the amount of money he had earned in his career, but he did go through two divorces. He was known to place property in other people's names, like his red Mini Cooper was technically owned by Patty. 
So what happened to Ray Gricar? Let's look at the three main theories. Theory number one, Ray was murdered. Perhaps the perpetrators were people associated with one of his criminal prosecutions. They were not too happy with being investigated and prosecuted. Ray was involved in prosecuting suspects who had been accused of serious crimes. There were several rumors about people who may have wanted to kill Ray. One person who may have been a threat to him was a prisoner who was prosecuted by Ray, who told his cellmate something about wanting to kill Ray. Another was a Hells Angel gang member who Ray prosecuted. There's even this theory about Jerry Sandusky, a notorious criminal who was an assistant coach at Penn State. In 1998, Ray declined to prosecute Sandusky, so there's this idea that perhaps one of Sandusky's victims or someone else who was mad about that targeted Ray. In reality, Ray was highly interested in prosecuting Sandusky. He just didn't have the evidence at that time. In 2012, which was after Ray's disappearance, Sandusky would be convicted of 45 criminal charges related to abuse. The murder theory might also explain the smell of cigarettes in his vehicle, like Ray had a stranger in his vehicle, somebody who would not normally have been in there. One of the problems when anything happens to a district attorney is that anybody they ever prosecuted becomes a suspect. This supports the idea of homicide in this case, as does the idea that he may have been there to meet someone else. But other evidence doesn't point to murder. For example, it's fairly clear that Ray was the one who destroyed the hard disk in that computer. After all, he searched the internet for ways to do that. It also seems clear that Ray selected the location where his car was parked. He had been there several times before. Moving to theory number two, Ray wanted to start a new life. It was reported that Ray was interested in a case where that happened. A police chief in Ohio vanished in order to get a fresh start. Ray may have taken off to Central Europe. He was fluent in Slovenian, and his Russian was pretty good. He also had relatives in Slovenia and had visited there a few times. Destroying the hard drive may have been a way to make it difficult to find him. Perhaps evidence of his plan was on that hard drive. This theory is consistent with him calling his girlfriend and saying he would be running late. This would delay her reporting him as a missing person and give him more time to get away. Working against this theory would be the fact that only $15,000 was unaccounted for over many years of financial records. That's probably the most he could have had stashed away in preparation for a new life. His bank accounts were never touched, no credit cards were used, it's not clear how he would have left the area. It's very difficult to start a new life, and Ray just didn't seem to have much of a motive. This takes me to theory number three. Ray Gricar brought an end to his own life. Perhaps he jumped in the Susquehanna River. He could have also made his way to some other location and died in such a way where his body was not recovered. Based on other people's observations, Ray was not depressed, but his brother Roy was severely depressed, and depression does have a genetic component. Sometimes people can be very good at hiding depression, especially people who are analytical. Ray was the type of person who made deliberate moves. He would have thought through his behavior before exhibiting it. If he was feeling depressed, he may have been careful to not let other people notice that. Perhaps he was worried it would affect his career negatively. The idea that his image was important to him is consistent with him destroying that hard drive. Some of his other behaviors were consistent with depression as well, like losing weight and talking about not being available for a trial date when he should have been available. Even though he said his upcoming retirement was desirable, this is a stressful time. Sometimes people preparing to retire can lose their sense of purpose. They identify so strongly with their career that once they lose that career, or once they're about to lose it, they really don't know who they are anymore. For some people, this is simply too painful. This theory about what happened to Ray fits well with the available evidence, but there are some factors that work against it. For example, what about the laptop? There may have been a few reasons the hard drive was destroyed. As I mentioned, it might have been that he was simply trying to protect his image. Perhaps it contained images and videos that would have reflected badly on Ray, maybe explicit content or something else he would have found somewhat embarrassing. Maybe it had information about investigations on it, and Ray was simply trying to protect the rights of people involved in those cases, like he was just trying to maintain confidentiality. He didn't want other people looking through the hard drive as they searched for him. 
Other factors against this theory would be that Ray was looking forward to retirement, he had a lot of reasons to live, and how did he die in such a way where his body was never recovered? Ray was not able to swim, so it seems unusual he would select a method involving a river. Also, if he jumped in, his body almost certainly would have been recovered. That part of the river had shallow water. With all this in mind, what do I think happened to Ray Grecar? Ranking these three theories from most probable to least probable, I would put theory number three as the most likely. Ray did not want to live. Then I would go with theory number one, he was murdered. Then theory number two, he somehow started a new life. The most powerful evidence from my perspective was the fact that he searched how to destroy the hard drive, and he chose the destination that day. If he had not searched about how to destroy the hard drive, then theory number one, the murder theory, becomes much more plausible. An assailant murdered him, took the computer, and destroyed the hard drive. This may have been in an effort to hide information about the identity of the killer. Now, it's technically possible that the killer broke into his residence, somehow logged onto his computer, and searched those terms, but this seems very unlikely. I think that Ray was following his own plan the day he disappeared. He was doing what he wanted to do. Those are my thoughts on the case of Ray Grecar. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.